It is 7 o'clock, and we will call the uh, October 17th, 2023 regular City Commission meeting to order. This is our second regular meeting in October. We are in Commission Chambers tonight. I hope you felt welcomed as you came in. We had Alex Schumann and Human Resources Manager uh, Samantha Potts serving as our greeters this evening. Alex is one of our city engineers extraordinaire and uh, both great examples of kind of the quality professional staff that we have here in Ormond Beach. As we call the meeting to order, I always introduce the folks who are sitting up in front of you. And to my right, your left, we have our recording secretary, Taylor Lockhart. And cross-training this evening with Taylor is Leah Miserali, and she's learning the job just so everybody knows what everybody else does. That's a smart management concept, and uh, it's great to see our clerk's office uh, using that. Next is the city clerk, Susan Dodderus. And then we have commissioner from zone one, Lori Tolland. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Our commissioner from zone two, Travis Sargent. Good evening, everyone. Our zone three commissioner, uh, you'll notice the, the empty seat tonight, is participating in the Florida League of Cities uh, fly-in event in Washington, D.C. So she's had a busy day on Capitol Hill. I told her to be careful. She might become the next Speaker of the House if she's not careful. <laughs> I know they're looking for people. Uh, but it's important for us to do those types of events, and occasionally they conflict with the city meetings, but you build relationships, uh, particularly with our federal delegation, uh, rail safety has been an important issue the past year, maybe year and a half. It's really been a hot topic, something that might become an issue here in Ormond Beach as well. But um, we're grateful that she takes the time away from our beautiful city to, to develop some of those relationships. Next in line is our deputy mayor and zone four commissioner, Harold Briley. Good evening, everyone. Our city manager, Joyce Shanahan. Assistant City Manager, Claire Whitley. City Attorney, Randy Hayes. And Police Chief, Jesse Godfrey, and Fire Chief, Howard Bailey, joining us as well. For those of you listening online, I'm Mayor Bill Partington. At this time, if you would please silence your cell phones and uh, rise for the invocation given by Pastor Neil Ganzel from Coquina Presbyterian Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Father God, thank you for all that uh, we have in this community because you set us here and uh, you made the coastline and everything else. We have indeed, uh, under your care and guidance, have been brought from many different places uh, among the citizenry, Lord, we from all over the country and world in some respects now. And all of us, Lord, uh, tonight uh, come thankful to you for, again, the city of Ormond Beach and also for these commissioners and the mayor and all of his staff in this city that uh, does such a wonderfully excellent job in managing uh, the beauty, the efficiency, and Father, the effectiveness of everything that we have here in this city. We ask that tonight, Father, that you would bring great wisdom uh, to the moderator of this meeting and to each one of the elected representatives, and that, Father, you would in all ways um, help us uh, to be friends with one another and to be uh, joined at the hip to make this city uh, as great a city as it can possibly be. But we can't do that unless you help us. And so we invoke your presence here today. And I pray this all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Four proclamations tonight and we'll start with 
a cool one if Janet Frank would come forward and anybody you want to bring up with you. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. And I want you to take Whereas Janet Frank, a retiree from Michigan, while living in South Carolina, would often visit her family in Florida. These visits made her realize Florida's true magic is in its state parks, with their tranquility and untouched natural beauty. And yearning to be closer to her children and grandchildren, Janet moved to Ormond Beach in 2017 with her husband, Carl, and made a goal to visit all 175 parks. And whereas with 175 parks consisting of over 800,000 acres, Florida leads the count country among state park systems with its elaborate state park partnerships, cutting edge resource management, nature and heritage tourism programs, and environmental education. And whereas in December 2018, Janet began her journey at Fort Clinch State Park in Amelia Island, where she received the first stamp in her real Florida passport. She continued to make her way across the state over the next five years, immersing herself in the unique flora, fauna, and geological formations of Florida, filling eight photo albums with many wonderful memories. And whereas a couple of the many treasures along Janet's journey include understanding Coquina, a unique sedimentary rock Janet was not familiar with being from Michigan, and as an avid reader and inspired by the book, The Yearling, visiting the Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings Historic State Park, which quickly became one of her favorite state parks. And whereas on April 21st, 2023, she received her 175th stamp with her visit to Egmont Key State Park in St. Petersburg. As Janet reflects on her adventures across Florida, she realizes that her decision to move to this vibrant state was more than just a geographical change. She experienced the true essence of Florida, resilience, natural beauty, and cultural heritage. Now, therefore, I, Bill Partington, Mayor of the City of Ormond Beach, on behalf of the entire commission, do hereby proclaim October 17th, 2023, as a day to recognize Janet Frank in the City of Ormond Beach and encourage all residents to join with me as we celebrate her remarkable accomplishment, dedication, and love for nature in this great state. Congratulations. I want to thank the mayor for this privilege and all who else were involved. And um, it truly was an exciting thing to do for me. I love to travel, and this just added to my enjoyment. And um, my husband and I started out doing this together. And then a couple months later, we had a friend and her husband join us. And unfortunately, her husband passed away with COVID. And my husband said, OK, you girls finish this up. I'm not going with you. <laughs> so. We did, and I'm glad to be here. Can you show the passport? Sure. In case anybody doubts it. Yes. 75 stamps, one from each, one from each park. Yes. And if you ever get the opportunity, do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Even if you don't finish, start and do as much as you can. Um, but I do, I do have all of, all the stamps. <laughs> Wonderful. Yep, it is awesome. And Janet, thank you so much for coming. We wanted to showcase you and your initiative. Uh, we love Florida. We've lived here basically all our lives. And uh, to know that, that you've fallen in love with it, too, is incredible. Uh, it's perfect timing. I wanted to point out that uh, the governor announced the great outdoors initiative. I think it was just last week. And for three months, from October 14th, 
2023 through January 13th, 2024, uh, the Devar Department of Environmental Protection has been directed to temporarily offer Florida State Park annual passes for families and individuals at a 50% discount. And then uh, FWC, Fish and Game, is going to be temporarily during that same time period offering its annual resident gold sportsman's licenses, five-year gold sportsman's licenses, and other fishing and hunting licenses at 50% reduction. So, Now's the perfect time to do this if you have the opportunity. And uh, like Janet said, start at Tomoka State Park here in Ormond Beach, wholly within the city limits of our city. If you've never been there, it's like going 100 miles away. It's a beautiful location. The other thing that's great about this initiative that the governor announced is that you don't need a fishing license when you're in those parks. And that's a new and unusual twist that can only benefit, I think, all of our state parks. So. Janet, we'd like to get a picture with you and everyone you brought with you, and the commission will be right behind us. And, nope, you stand here facing the audience. Bring up anybody you want to bring up, and we're here to celebrate you tonight. Next, uh, we have, I think, Lisa Kasatekis, and we're doing, there she is. Hey, how are you? Celebrate Babies Week. Nice to see you. Long time, long time. I'm sorry. It's Lisa Benitez now. She got married. <laughs> Let me give you this proclamation. Celebrate Babies Week. And I was on a plane last night coming home from Atlanta, and there were two babies and they both started crying at exactly the same time so you know the pressure in the ears was hitting them uh, but let me read this let me read this proclamation whereas infants and young children thrive in nurturing environments and stable relationships that meet their developmental needs these crucial early years lay the foundation for a child's psychological emotional developmental and physical well-being and whereas FAME, the Florida Association of Infant Mental Health, represented locally by the FAME Northeast Central Florida chapter, is committed to ensuring every infant and young child is nurtured and protected by consistent, safe, and loving caregivers. And the two moms on the plane last night were that. They were excellent. Annually, during the third week of October, FAME leads efforts to encourage the community to honor and celebrate babies and those who work tirelessly for the betterment of young children. And whereas the only statewide organization dedicated to strengthening professionals who work with or on behalf of infants and young children, FAME supports the important adults in children's lives to ensure all children will be emotionally healthy, equipped to learn, and nurtured to develop their full potential. FAME supports the infant and early childhood mental health workforce to better serve young children and families by training professionals across disciplines to specialize in infant and early childhood mental health, preparing them to earn the Florida Infant Mental Health Endorsement that FAME holds exclusively in Florida. And whereas research consistently demonstrates the need for support systems that contribute to positive outcomes for all children, ensuring access to services and programs supporting infants, toddlers, young children, and their families improves the overall well-being of children in Volusia County. And whereas through intentional community outreach, like tonight, professional development networking, fundraising, social action, and policy awareness efforts, the chapter seeks to honor and celebrate babies, their families, and those who support them. Now, therefore, I, Bill Partington, Mayor of the City of Ormond Beach, on behalf of our entire commission, do hereby proclaim October 15th through 21st, 2023, as Celebrate Babies Week in the City of Ormond Beach, and urge all residents to support initiatives promoting a happy, healthy, and productive society striving for positive infant mental health. Congratulations and thank you.
Thank you so much. I do have a team that's typically with me, but because we do pride being parents, they're busy with their kids. And maybe they'll be watching online or being able to watch the recording. But I do want to share just a few things. I grew up in this community, and it is an honor to be able to share with you what has become my passion, which is understanding the importance of attachment, especially starting in utero. And so thank you, city. Thank you, Mayor, and all behind me for honoring Celebrate Babies and wanting to understand more about infant mental health. It's truly an honor to be here. Thank you. Stacy, come on up. Yes, Who'd you bring with you? Karen Knowles. Karen Knowles and Stacy from the uh, Daughter of the American Revolution. I'm proud to present you with this proclamation recognizing National Family Literacy Day. Whereas the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution, a nonprofit women's service organization, has a long standing dedication to promoting patriotism, preserving American history, and ensuring a better future for America through enhanced education for children and adults. And whereas this dedication to education extends to National Family Literacy Day, which celebrates the impact parents have on their children's learning, recognizing the crucial role of parents in their child's education, this day serves as a reminder of the responsibility parents have in cultivating a love for reading and learning with their families. Celebrated annually on November 1st, since its inception in 1994, brings attention to the importance of reading together, engaging in educational activities, and creating a supportive environment that fosters a lifelong love for education. And whereas family literacy programs play a pivotal role in empowering families and fostering a culture of reading within households, these programs offer resources, guidance, and support to parents, equipping them with the necessary tools to engage their children in reading and learning. By promoting family literacy, these programs enhance children's educational outcomes and enable parents to develop their own literacy skills. And whereas through the power of reading, individuals can gain self-respect, confidence, and the ability to strive toward goals that otherwise would not be achievable. Literacy provides individuals with the means to obtain better employment opportunities, communicate effectively, access information, and engage in civic participation. And whereas the city of Ormond Beach is proud to contribute to this cause by hosting the Once Upon a Storytime series, this event serves to bring the community together around the joy of reading and highlights the positive impact families can have on their children's educational success. The city extends its gratitude to local librarians, educators, and liter literacy service providers for their tireless efforts in strengthening children's literacy levels and fostering a more literate community. Now, therefore, based on all of that, I, Bill Partington, on behalf of this entire commission and the city of Ormond Beach, do hereby proclaim October 17th, 2023, as National Family Literacy Day in the city of Ormond Beach and encourage parents to devote time to reading with their children, engage in meaningful conversations, and create an environment where reading is valued and celebrated. Thank you both very much. Congratulations. Thank you so much to the city and mayor. I wanted to pronounce this actually the National Society of the Daughters of American Revolution Literacy Championship Award presented to the city of Ormond Beach by Captain James Ormond Chapter DAR in recognition of outstanding work in literacy promotion. Thank you so much. We're, yep, we will get a picture, and we're happy to accept that. I'll accept that on behalf of the entire, entire commission. 
uh, really, I mean, it just boils down to reading with your children and having those conversations about what you just read. It's so, so important. And can, such a simple thing can make such a huge difference in your lives. So thank you all very much. Let's get a picture. All right, last but not least, it just happens uh, to be Mobility Week, and I think, is it Lorene Bobo from the Department of Transportation is joining us to accept a proclamation on behalf of their Target Zero initiative. How are you? Thank you for being here. We have really an incredible partnership with our District 5 DOT. They do incredible work throughout the District 5 region, which is a, it's a huge district, uh, working with all of their professional staff to make our transportation as safe and efficient as possible. <clears throat> Let me read this proclamation. Whereas safe and reliable transportation systems are essential for the vitality of any city, in Ormond Beach, the life and health of our residents are paramount, and it's imperative that we prioritize their safety on our roadways. And whereas Florida DOT is committed to curbing traffic-related fatalities and injuries and have adopted the Target Zero initiative, Target Zero highlights the statewide collaboration and shared responsibility in achieving the goal of zero traffic-related fatalities and serious injuries. And whereas a vital aspect of the commitment to Target Zero is the integration of Mobility Week, celebrating its eighth annual statewide celebration from October 27th through November 4th, Mobility Week aims to raise awareness about safe and multimodal transportation choices. And whereas the city of Ormond Beach stands committed to the principle that no loss of life or serious injury on our roadways is acceptable. By embracing the state of Florida's initiative to reduce the number of transportation-related serious injuries and deaths across Florida to zero and drawing inspiration, from FDOT's adoption of Target Zero, we affirm our dedication to creating a safe and reliable transportation system. And whereas, as our city grows, it's imperative that we provide individuals with accessible information regarding transportation choices, Mobility Week serves as a unique opportunity for residents and visitors to explore the various transportation options available, encouraging thoughtful consideration of reducing traffic congestion improving community well-being and minimizing traffic related ca casualties and injuries now therefore i bill partington mayor of the city of ormond beach florida do hereby proclaim october 27th through november 4th 2023 as mobility week in the city of ormond beach and encourage all residents to embrace the principles of safe and reliable transportation options and support fdots and the city's commitment to target zero congratulations Thank you very much. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much for inviting me here tonight. Um, you know, FDOT's Target Zero initiative is that goal of getting to zero fatalities and serious injuries on our roadways. Um, we can't do it alone, and that's why we enjoy partners um, like the city of Ormond Beach joining us in that effort to get to zero. Every single person deserves to go home every single night. Um, what you guys have done tonight is really to have told your citizens, you've told visitors to Ormond Beach that you care about them and that you want them to get home. And I just encourage everybody here tonight to be respectful to everybody you see on the roadways, whether they're walking or they're biking, the, even the drivers next to you. Do, what you. do your part to get everybody home. So thank you very much. Thank you, William. I know many of you may have seen the commercial where they ask the gentleman, uh, you know, how many traffic deaths would be acceptable. I think he says 10 or 15 or something like that. And then they start parading 10 or 15 of his family members out. And so no matter how difficult Target Zero may be, it really is the only appropriate option for a campaign like this. And so I congratulate you, Lorene and, and DOT. I know under your leadership this is going to be uh, 
a well managed project and ultimately a huge success so I'm encouraged by that and so thank you for all you do and let's get a picture Lorene, before you go, I just want you to know, and many of you may not know, but the person who uh, was in charge of and responsible for a big part of the I-4 Ultimate project, a multi-billion dollar project, was under the direction of Lorene Bobo. And so I like to tell my, I've got three girls, I like to tell them that women can do anything they want uh, if you study hard enough and work hard enough and to be in charge of a successful project like that which really has improved the I-4 corridor. Second thing I want to tell you is every time I drive that I-4 corridor and I get to use the uh, express lane, at night when I get home I say my prayers and I thank God and ask him to bless the people at DOT who came up with the express lane idea. I would pay four times as much to drive in that express lane. Now, if you can just work over there to get it all the way from uh, Daytona to Tampa, that, that'll be the next big project once you get Target Zero accomplished. But thank you very much. Yep. All right. Have a good night. Don't get any ideas about raising the toll. <laughs> it's a value, I tell you what. All right. Audience remarks. City Commission has adopted a policy of a three minute time limit for each speaker. Uh, if you would please address your comments to me and uh, no personal attacks. And we will start tonight with Fran Canfield. <laughs> She's got short legs. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? You know, it, it, it's, it's ironic. Coming at you. Oh, I didn't do it really. Thank you. That, late, that we were just talking about the mobility and, and the traffic and everything. And late this afternoon, I was coming out of Hull Road. Unfortunately, there was a horrendous motorcycle. It was very, very bad. Both lanes were completely shut down. There was nobody moving, which now kind of is uh, a lead into Hull Road and Belvedere. But actually, that's not really what I wanted to talk to you about. Many of our neighbors here are going to talk about the, the fuel tank project. And it's agreed the project would have a devastating effect on Volusia County, especially our Ormond Beach. I ask that our commissioners now look beyond this project. The residual vacant land surrounding the core, which will be Belvedere, quietly is being bought up. And I have to ask myself, why? This entire quadrant could turn into an industrial light heavy area. Now, on top of that, when you look outside the box, now factor in the airport. The airport wanting to once again start up to extend the runway. Now, proposing to have trees cut or removed from all four runways. If this should happen, that'll be right in the backyard on Barefoot Trail in Bear Creek. In 2015, the FAA flight instrument procedure allowed a 300-foot instrumental procedure. Now, they want to propose to decrease it to 200 feet. Can you imagine a student pilot, or any other pilot for that matter, 
flying at 200 feet and a piece of the plane falls off on top of one of those tanks, like the windshield and other parts recently fell off a plane. And what's to stop this Mexican company, Great Bow, and no disparaging remarks against them one way or the other, or any other non-American company from buying up more property. The golf course, perhaps, property values would plummet and sold for pennies on the dollar. So you see, the very lifestyle that we dearly love and enjoy here in this beautiful Ormond Beach itself and our peace of mind is being threatened. So I just ask thank you and, and look at the whole picture. Thank you, Fran. Celeste Mastro Buena. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Celeste Mastrobuno from Bear Creek. I am a village resident since 2006. I am opposed to the Belvedere fuel farm. And I am most concerned about the fueling while the train is blocking the street access. Thinking about the ball field on a busy day, young children playing soccer, football, baseball, and playing on swings. Now, suppose the near nearby airport has a student pilot traveling on a Sunday that the tower is not manned. It comes a little too low and crashes in the field. Someone gets hurt and needs emergency help. The train is blocking the tracks, fueling up, completely blocking Hull Road, the only way in or out of the ball field. Also, it's a long train and is blocking airport road completely. That leaves no entry or exit to the fields, including the 640 homes that reside in Bear Creek Village. This is a frightening scenario that is a real possibility. Please help us stop Belvedere. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Judy Robin. She'll be followed by Nancy Bates. Hello, Mr. Mayor and Council and everyone that's here. My name is Judy Robin and I also live in Bear Creek Village. Many, many issues have been raised and concerns have been brought to your attention. But I'd like to mention the upcoming Biketober Week. And I did send him an email to Mr. Mayor today and he kindly responded in a very quick manner my impression is that we really should have someone with influence, either from the council, perhaps the police department, any of the emergency response services, invite a representative of Belvedere to come down this weekend, Wednesday, Thursday, um, today, today's Wednesday, uh, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, to witness in person the congestion, the traffic, 10,000 bikers and family and friends and visitors in the area. I really don't think Belvedere is fully aware of actually the impact that it has on our community. So my suggestion, please, is to please consider if someone with influence can invite them. I know it's short notice, but I think it would make a huge impact. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy Bates followed by Lindsay Pate. Good evening, I'm Nancy Bates. I am also a resident of Bear Creek Village and I am on the front line should something happen to the Belvedere um, fuel line. So obviously I'm against it. Uh, what I would like to do is to take a few minutes to say thank you. Thank you to all of the commissioners who have worked so diligently, who have listened to what we had to say and have tried your very best to do what you can do to help protect us and safely allow us to go forward. I wanna thank you. Thank you from my bottom of my heart. But I do have a few questions. 
Um, have you received any responses from any of the letters that you have written to the legislators? Are you getting any pushback from anyone? Um, is there anything we can do to help? Um, have you sent any other letters? I know we certainly have been sending letters. We've, we, we've actually called the governor <laughs> and um, left messages there as well. So I'm just wondering what you are doing. Are, are you involved in good communication between, um, with um, Volusia County? I hope so because I think the only way we are going to get this problem solved is with both groups working collegially to, and cooperatively together. What I feel like sometimes is that there's a ball being kicked from one to the other. And I am pleased to hear that you are at least doing your best to try to make things different for us. And for that, I thank you. But please don't forget about us. Please don't keep this on the forefront. Give us some updates periodically of what's going on. You know what you're doing. We don't know what you're doing. So well, that's all I have to say. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Lindsay Pate, followed by Catherine, is it Panty? Pante, thank you. Lindsay Pate, proud Ormond Beach resident. I want to thank the city and all the departments that contributed making National Night Out an amazing event. It was wonderfully organized and had so many unique yet meaningful experiences for my children and brought the community together. I often joke that living in Ormond Beach is like being in a classic Hallmark movie. Take away the snow and add some palm trees, estuaries, beaches, and state parks. For me, swap the love interest storyline with my amazing husband and three beautiful children, and then add in our diverse architecture, family-friendly events, and ton of unique small businesses. There's no other place I'd rather raise my family and live out life. Switching gears, I'd like to bring your attention to uh, just a few hours ago, the county meeting had two motions that would directly affect the city of Warman Beach in relation to Belvedere's proposed fuel farm terminal. The first motion was to ask you, the city of Orman Beach, to revisit the interlocal agreement and annex 874 Hole Road. From my perspective, it was implied that the county of Volusia couldn't amend any definitions or language because of State Bill 250, yet the city could. I know the city has already made mention of reviewing the interlocal agreement with Volusia County. While their motion seems appealing on the surface, I can't help but view this as the county passing the responsibilities and accountability to you, the city of Ormond Beach. The general public continues to put pressure on our county, rightfully so, to defend the families, businesses, and quality of life we already have. I just don't understand why they made that motion on that. The second motion was made to approve a conversation between the county and FEC to possibly lease the land at 874 Hole Road. Troy Kent said he had three ideas on how the county could utilize the land. At first thought, that sounds great, but let's remember who owns that land. It's owned by the FEC, who is owned by Grupo Mexico, the same company that has developed and has ties with Belvedere as their pet project for storing and moving the fuel all over Florida by rail and tanker trucks. To me, it seems far-fetched that Grupo Mexico would all of a sudden want to give up their new business adventure and endeavor for a deal with the county. While I love the idea and intention of it, I just think we should be aware that instead of the county taking accountability and responsibility, they're gonna pass the buck to you guys. But I do believe that this city is doing everything in their power to continue to boldly say no, in your words, heck no, to Belvedere. I like that and I want the city and county to work together to fight for what we so proudly love. This is our hometown, these are our people, and this is our quality of life. And I like that you guys are fighting for it, so I think you should know. Catherine, followed by Mary Allen. Hi, Catherine Pante. Um, Mayor, you might have to do a heck no again. <laughs> Just saying. Tonight, Just... Lush County Council voted to ask Ormond Beach to annex the property so Ormond Commission could choose what happened in the city relating to Belvedere terminals. This is doing nothing more than relinquishing the county's responsibility to oppose the fuel terminal and support public safety for residents. David Santiago made the motion. The vote was 7-0 to bring back for further discussion. This concept of passing the buck to Orange Beach is wrong in my view, and this will come back for discussion. Councilman Kent made a motion for the county to lease the land from FEC Railroad. Belvedere does not have a lease in place. This passed 7-0 to come back for discussion. On another topic, 
Volusia County is considering a sex offender ordinance in order to protect our children. A letter of support was given by all law enforcement agencies in Volusia County. In the same spirit of protecting our children and community, the fuel farm is a public safety issue. I request the Ormond PD and Fire Department support the residents with a letter of support opposing the fuel farm. I hope this sets an example for all agencies to follow suit. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Allen, followed by Michelle Zirkelbeck. Hi, I live at Bear Creek Village, and my husband and I have lived there for about 20 years, and we have seen the traffic increase, and we also have Biketoberfest, and now we have Oktoberfest, and we have increased traffic from the sports center, and we have the Iron Horse, which has lots and lots of traffic from the bikes, and the, to have that um, fuel farm there would be terrible, and we don't have enough fire department and police departments to keep us safe, and now they're asking for us to have Embry-Riddle come and have more planes. When we sit at our, our kitchen table, we can see the planes taken off, and they're taking off every two minutes. We can watch them out our kitchen window. And on the weekends, they don't even have the tower going. And so that's an, e an increased safety issue. So now you're asking us to take on 100 planes from Embry-Riddle, and that's another safety issue. So pretty soon, we're going to have things flying over our heads and probably coming into our homes, hitting us over the heads with, and, and probably the fuel farm blowing up in our backyard, and we won't be safe any place. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Michelle Zirkelback. Good evening, Michelle Zirkelbach from Tomoka Oaks. Um, I applaud everybody that's been standing up and talking about Belvedere, and I strongly encourage all of you to make sure that your county counterparts have observed the video. I don't know if it was Elena Craft or one of the others, but somebody went to Tampa and drove by the fuel farm that the representative from Belvedere said nobody would even notice was there. Um, and I think the thing that hit me the most is I have been in that area before many years ago and watching the video, the sense came back to me about the smell. You really can smell it. So I don't care what they say or what they try to sell you or what report they give you, there's definitely going to be things in the air that are not good for our community or for our children. I am here as a reminder also about Tomoka Oaks. We continue to be adamantly opposed to the proposed project. Um, I mentioned last week that I was hoping that you guys were doing a lot of studying. Um, I hope that Mr. Spraker has received some questions from you because I do anticipate that Mr. Merrill is once again going to stand up in public and in the newspaper and any other publication he can get and state what a good guy the applicants are because they could build 600 homes. I would really like for you all to be prepared for that statement and I would like somebody to ask Mr. Spraker, if that is accurate. I believe that that is an inaccurate number that they keep throwing out to make it seem like they have conceded a lot down from their proposed 600 to 276 and then the big change to 272. So I do encourage you to please ask that question and be prepared. Um, it is very disheartening to hear that continually repeated. And our impression is that when you lay in the roads and the infrastructure and the other items that are needed to have a community, that you can't put 600 homes there. Um, I do also want to touch base because I believe the applicant has provided a report about home values and his view that the home values will increase. Yet he was on the other side being paid with somebody else on another deal and said that in a similar situation, the home values would decrease. So I think those types of reports really require a little extra depth, kind of digging through the layers to see what the reality is. And I don't know if you've had a chance, I know Angie Scholl mentioned in the planning board meeting that the applicant had provided examples 
of successful golf course uh, homes that had been built on golf courses. I believe the numbers that she was indicating is there were several examples they provided that were 18 whole golf courses that had been converted to 100, 120 homes, but none of them in my recollection were 276 homes. In the honor of Ms. Franks, Janet Franks, that was here earlier, uh, Tomoka Oaks residents, we have started this and we are gonna do as much as we can. We appreciate your support. Thank you, and we'll move to uh, approval of minutes. The minutes have been sent to the commission for review, also posted to the city's website. These are from the regular city commission meeting of October 4th, 2023. Any additions, deletions, or corrections, commissioner? Mayor, move approval. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign, and we'll show those passing unanimously. The consent agenda, the action proposed is stated for each item on the consent agenda. This is item number seven. Does any commissioner wish to pull any item from the consent agenda? Move approval. Second. We've been seconded. Please call the vote. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. Any commissioners wish to comment on any of the consent agenda items? Commissioner Sargent. Uh, 7W. You are recognized. Um, I just would like to say thank you to staff and to um, everyone that was involved with this negotiations. It was um, long, um, as all of the officers that are in the audience, thank you for all that you do for the city of Ormond. Um, you are appreciated. And I think this contract is a very good start. Um, and it shows that this commission is behind y'all. Um, public safety is number one in this community. And um, I just can't say thank you enough to all y'all. Thank you. Commissioner Tall. Yeah. I just want to reiterate what Commissioner Sargent just said. We do appreciate our police very much. And I hope you um, feel that you are um, appreciated in that, that this contract is something acceptable for you all and we'll just keep moving forward and just want to say thank you for all your good work. Thank Mayor, you. I would just echo those comments. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you all. And we will move to public hearings. I'll open the public hearings and ask our clerk to read 8A. Ordinance number 2023-51, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Ormond Beach, Florida, vacating a portion of Benton Street, a platted public right-of-way south of Pennsylvania Avenue, located between Volusia County parcel identification numbers 3136-01-08-0010, 3136-01-08-0010, and 3136-01-01-0021, and along Volusia County parcel identification numbers 3136-01-01-0021 and 3136-01-01-0022, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, providing for recordation and transmittal and setting forth an effective date, this is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-51, read by title only. Thank you, Susan, and I'll ask our planning director, Stephen Spraker, to speak on this item. Good evening, Stephen Spraker, planning director. Um, this is a, a right-of-way vacation. This presentation will carry cover the three items together. This is a 1926 plat of the National Gardens um, subdivision. As you can see, there are a lot of streets and a lot of um, 50 by 100 foot wide lots. The three right-of-ways that are sought, sought to be partially vacated are located here in blue. Um, they include uh, Rosemary Street, Benton Street, and Hammond Street. Um, there is a subdivision called Bradford Park, which is seeking a townhome subdivision. They've put together the land. Uh, they're in the site plan process. They'll be before the planning board and city commission, and they're seeking to vacate these roadways as part of the process. At the last uh, meeting, there was a notice of intent. Tonight is the first reading of ordinance. If approved, it would be uh, back before the City Commission on November 7th. Staff is available if there are any questions. Thank you, Stephen. Any questions for Stephen? Uh, 
I don't have any cards on 8A. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 8B. Ordinance number 2023-52, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Ormond Beach, Florida, vacating a portion of Hammond Street, a platted public right-of-way south of Pennsylvania Avenue and north of Plantation Oaks Boulevard, located between Volusia County parcel identification numbers 3125-08-00-0014, 3125-08-00-0014, and 3136-01-01-0021, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, providing for recordation and transmittal, and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-52, read by title only. Thank you. I don't have any cards. Move Fair approval. Move. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 8C. Ordinance number 2023-53, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Ormond Beach, Florida, vacating a portion of Rosemary Street, a platted public right-of-way south of Pennsylvania Avenue, located between Volusia County parcel identification numbers 3136-01-09-0001, and 3136-01-08-0010, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, providing for recordation and transmittal and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-53, read by title only. Thank you. Again, I don't have any cards on 8C. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 8D. Resolution number 2023-191, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Ormond Beach, Florida, approving the preliminary plat for the Enclave subdivision, establishing conditions and expiration date of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2023-191, read by title only. Thank you, Susan. I'll ask our planning director, Stephen Spraker, to speak on this item. Good evening, Stephen Spraker. This is a request for a preliminary plat. The property is about 26 acres, and they're seeking to do uh, 12 individual lots. The property is located at 475 Timber Creek Road. It is just north of the Southern Pine subdivision along Timber Creek Road. Uh, Timber Creek Road is a Volusia County roadway. Um, the property has a zoning of suburban residential under that zoning district they're required a minimum of one acre lots when they are connected to water the uh, site plan is included in your packet um, it is a unique subdivision um, in that they're not doing new roads uh, they're using the existing timber creek access there is a 12 inch water line that will be extended the length of the property to provide water they have worked with volusia county to limit the curb cuts so each curb cut will serve three lots. So there'll be four curb cuts instead of 12, which is a positive. They are um, required to dedicate 32 feet of right of way for the future expansion of Timber Creek Road. They provided a green belt buffer, which exceeds our land development code along the I-95 frontage here. The lot sizes are between 1.7 and 2.75 acres. There are on-site wetlands, which would have to be, if impacted by the, prop by the future property owners, would have to be mitigated and permitted and the trees and the stormwater reviews would occur with the individual lots as they are permitted uh, the planning board recommended approval they reviewed um, the application the steps of approval start with the zoning which is suburban residential preliminary plat is the construction plans and then you will see the final plat uh, once the infrastructure improvements are completed thank you thank you Stephen. any questions for Stephen? i do commissioner Tolland. so um I know we, we had talked, and I, I think it's, it's important if you can explain to us those types of wetlands and on that property, and is it related to Grovesner, Grovesner Branch as well? Because I know we have a lot of discussion on the flooding issues with that, and I just think that's something that's important for you all to, to understand as well. Right. So there was an environmental assessment report as part of the site plan process 
Uh, these are isolated wetlands that are not connected um, to any other outside water body. Um, this is very similar um, along our Royal Parkway. There are large lot developments that develop very similar to this. Um, you know, some of the wetlands, you know, these lots don't make any sense to, to impact, and these may not be impacted either. But th that's the right of the pro future property owner to determine what they're going to do in accordance with both city and St. John's permitting. And then I had one other question for mm -hmm. Stephen, and it was related to the, um, the uh, right of way and then the five foot sidewalk. I know that, um, you know, we've talked how we were thinking about connectivity and pass and, you know, with a new project on A1A, it's a multimodal 12 foot sidewalk. This, it may not be specific for this property now, but maybe we need to start thinking about sidewalks with future developments do we want to maybe think about making them wider so we don't have to go back and make them wider for that connectivity um, and i had asked mr spraker about southern pines and they have a five foot sidewalk as well so right now would be consistent with what they're at but i don't know where that fits in discussion it would be a policy direction i think the city commission has talked about a master sidewalk uh, plan so that could be part of the outcome of that plan. We would need to work with Volusia County. Volusia, uh, Timber Creek is a Volusia County right of way, so they would have to be part of this this you know increased uh, sidewalk width. Ormond Crossings already has um, those wider sidewalks, which is just north of here. So there there is a vision of that. If you want to go back and you know enact it in the center part of the city, then we would need to revise the land development code. Okay. This is a, a preliminary plat, you know, they right. meet they meet the, the individual regulations and then Correct. so there it's not a negotiated zoning district. Right. Okay. Thank you. Right. Deputy Mayor Briley. Uh, Mr. Mayor to that point, um, I think you know when you when you talk about sidewalks, typically I think the typical sidewalk's about four foot. I think the county does five foot now. Um, but I would like to your point, Commissioner Tolland, to maybe have us look at in the future uh, where you have sidewalks along corridors like this or, or, or thoroughfares such as Timber Creek Road, a six foot sidewalk. So you do have enough room for multimodal type use and that type of thing. So just something to consider in the future. Sure. I know it doesn't really pertain to this, but I, I, I like where the conversation is going. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Also have a card from the applicant, uh, Representative Randy Hudak from Zeb Cohen don't have to speak but if you want to for any reason you're welcome to any questions for Randy no nope. okay thank you <clears throat> yes sir do we need a motion or anything to address what Commissioner Tolan and Commissioner Riley for staff to come back to us or I kind of got the impression there was nothing we could do tonight on that issue but Stephen correct correct us if we're wrong I think the policy direction that we're hearing is you want to look at major corridors and expanding that to an 8, 10, 12 foot uh, corridor. So we hear you. We can um, start working on that. I think we have a sidewalk master plan in, in the process. So that may be rolled into that. And then we could also in the future talk to the county about, you know, doing that on corridors that are in the city. So we hear you. Thank you. That's a D. I don't have any other cards. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 8E. Resolution number 2023-192, a resolution authorizing the execution and issuance of a development order for a special exception to allow outdoor activity to include itinerant vending during special events at CM Custom Pool Designs and more outdoor living located at 1133 and 1141 North US Highway 1 and being situated within the I-1 Light Industrial Zoning District, establishing conditions and expiration date of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2023-192 read by title only. Thank you and I'll ask our planning director to speak on this item as well. 
Good evening, Stephen Spraker, a plan director. This is uh, a property within the interlocal service boundary agreement. It's located at uh, 1133 and 1141 North Highway US 1. Um, our land development code has permitted conditional and special exception uses. One of the special exception uses is outdoor activity. So it doesn't mean that it's prohibited. It just, it has to go through a public hearing process to determine the appropriateness. Um, the, again, the property is located on US 1. This is 1133 and this is 1141. As part of the interlocal service boundary agreement, um, the issues of itinerant vending, food truck, special event was, was a key topic. And, and one of the things that was written into the code was you have to have a permanent business in order to have these type of events. Uh, the property owner has um, invested you know, a lot of time and money to establish two, two new businesses. They've taken out a blighted structure. So they are investing in the North US 1 corridor. At the planning board, they indicated uh, they're working with the abutting property owner, I believe it was the Broken Spoke, to assist with overflow vendors. So their application is to do a maximum of 10 itinerant vendors and two food trucks, and it would be towards the front of the property located. This would be US-1 here, and this would be the, the tents and the food trucks. So there's no outdoor music. At the planning board, there was some discussion about the rear of the property. Um, discussion focused on a fence and particularly around 1133 North US Highway 1. And there was a recommendation to install a, a fence. And the applicant has a fence contractor lined up depending on, on what the city commission's action tonight is. The remainder of the property of 1141 has an existing wood fence. Um, the applicant has indicated that they're willing to do whatever fencing requirements um, that is placed on it. The way the city has done these, uh, as you saw in the staff report, is we permit it for three years. And what that, what that does is, if there are violations or if there are code enforcement issues, the, the commission has the right to review it again and not issue it. Some properties change hands, uh, about four or five of them haven't come back and the special exception expires. So it's a chance to make sure that the applicant does what the requirements are. Um, the planning board did recommend approval with a five to zero vote and the applicant is here to address the commission. Thank you. And uh, Kobe Moore. Any questions for the applicant commission? No. Nope, I think we're okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'll move approval. Second. Second. So we've been seconded. And uh, let me get through these other two cards. Oh, I'm sorry. No problem. Uh, Christine Wagstaff. Good evening. I think we spoke last time uh, a month ago at the last meeting. And I don't know if I got confused, but after speaking with uh, Colby Moore about the fence, uh, the first meeting on September a month ago, things just didn't work out well. I went by to speak with him today about getting the fence in and everything, and I was told that he would only had to put up a fence at the end of the property. <laughs> And he said, well, that happened at the meeting the other night. I don't know what meeting was the other night, but we were only included in the month ago meeting. And I put my objections up at that time. And they said they would try and get maybe a vinyl fence or a soundproof fence, because I'm on just on the other side of his property. And this, he's gonna have to be using a lot of that area to park bikes during the Biketoberfest, bike week, whatever. And I'm used to the motorcycles, I explained last, week that you know I, I was riding with my husband for 14 years he passed two years ago in a motorcycle accident I'm still healing but so motorcycle noise if there's like a couple motorcycles that's one thing but when you get in packs during Oktoberfest and bike week it's just a little bit much so for him to be planning on parking all these motorcycles right on the other side of my fence and yet to tell me oh no I spoke with somebody at a meeting. I don't know what meeting he was at the other night. He said, uh, they told me, I'm doing whatever they told me to do. I only have to put a fence in down at the other end. <sighs> you know, I'm just I'm a little confused as to how this happened. But uh, I thought we were going to get together and, and try and work things out about the sound barrier and cutting some trees and stuff, which he did help me with today. But the sound barrier, that just went out the window. I guess it's... I don't know if it's too expensive or they couldn't do it in time. 
but uh, it seems like it just flew right out the window. Um, no one ever got back to me. I did make several calls to Michelle Moore about getting things organized because she said, well, call me and make sure we're there and then we'll talk about it. Well, I called two times, one time last week, one time Monday and never got a response. So I went over there today and that's when I spoke with uh, Kobe. But I was very upset to find out that uh, whatever meeting he went to, the mesh fence is what he has to replace only with a wood fence, only six foot high. Now I have my fences higher than that, but it's an older fence. I don't think the house was built uh, in the 80s and it's like there's pieces coming out and everything. But from what he said, if I get another fence put up, it can only be six foot high. So I don't know how I'm gonna work that, but I just needed some, some kind of support in some way, because I live in Norman also. And what I got from Kobe was, well, I hired 40 people. I'm paying employees. Uh, they have families. They live in Norman. I said, but I do too. Right. <laughs> I Thank pay you. taxes Christine, too. your time is up, and I'll ask Kobe oh. to come up and address that before we uh, make any decisions. Next, I have okay. Robin Can. short and sweet sorry I can't talk very loud but um, I'm just here for Christine I live next door to her and I'm usually not home I'm usually working but since I've been home since that last meeting um, it is extremely noisy I didn't know what it was it was like oh my gosh what is that thunder or what but um, I could see why she would be so concerned about the noise of the motorcycles. Like, it's not the motorcycles themselves or the people, it's the noise. It's really loud. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. And Stephen, I'm guessing you weren't involved in any of the discussions between the neighbors? No, I wasn't involved in any of the discussions, nor was staff. Um, the, the only meeting that happened was the planning board meeting. So this is the city commission after the planning board meeting. And I think, you know, in, in hearing what um, the citizen is saying is that the location of the fence was confused at the planning board, that um, basically the planning board reacted to, to this location, which is 1133, and the, re the resident actually lives over here. There is an existing fence on her side, and there's a chain link fence on this side. So. You know, my next step would be to go to the applicant and see what he his thoughts are, and then if the commission wants to move the fence or whatever you want to do, he's indicated he's willing to install a fence per direction. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Stephen? From, yes, from what I was reading in the planning board minutes, it looked like there was a fence all across the back except for that one spot, and that's what the planning board had recommended, right? Correct, which is um, behind 1133, which is not where this resident lives. We haven't had any contact with this property owner. All right. So that you're correct that this is the, the chain link fence on this side, which is 1133. And then 1141 has that wood uh, fence in the county that is probably seven or seven and a half feet in, in height. And then a chain link front fence um, from the applicant's property. And the applicant was supposed to had agreed to put up the same fence that was our the wooden fence same as already that was there from what i understand correct in, okay. in the area that, that had the chain that link okay. so I, I don't think that the the, the concerns that the, the resident is saying was was fully understood it was that it was this area and not the area where she's living at if, if i'm understanding correctly okay thank you deputy mayor brother so, Stephen, if you can put up that shot of the other, the wooden fence. Okay. Is that, now that picture is being taken from the applicant's property, correct? Correct. Okay. It looks like the bad side of that fence faces the applicant. Correct, it does. <clears throat> so, is that the applicant's fence or is that the neighbor's fence? Um, I'll let the applicant talk. It, it appears there, the chain link fence, which is, I understand, kind of hard to see. There's a chain link fence and then there's the applicant. Right. Here's the chain link fence is the applicant's. I'm going to let them speak of, of which one's which. Okay. All right, 
Just state your name for the record. So I'm we Kobe know Moore. Thank you, Kobe. Uh, I'm actually not positive who fence, whose fence it is. I mean, we just bought the property a year ago, and all that was there. So, but we we thought because the original complaint was that they were saying people were jumping the fence at, on events and going through the neighborhood. So we were trying to secure the fence. So I was just, I just assumed she lived behind the chain link fence house because that's the only fence. But that's her house there. That it's an eight foot fence. There's no I don't I didn't know that was her house. So we thought the chain link fence that they were saying someone was jumping that's what we're trying to secure to make the bike week event better because we didn't want people jumping a fence to go which i've never seen anybody jump a fence back there but we're just trying to close it off with that but that's what we the last I mean, i'm meeting. just curious when you bought the property a survey wouldn't have shown whose fence that was well it shows a fence on the line but it doesn't really it doesn't show two fences it just shows one the, the survey. My survey, I don't know what her survey looks like, but okay. my survey has eight Just showed fence. one fence. Huh? Your, your survey, survey only showed one fence. Just shows a fence, and I'm not sure exactly which okay. one it is, but I mean, the ugly side towards me typically means it's her fence, but it's, uh, here less it's there. Right, we don't know when it was installed or who installed it and yeah. how it was installed. And how old it was, but it goes all the way down, sure. except for the one house behind the, the other property has just chain links, so we're closing that in and they're doing that actually on Thursday so you assume if your property's totally surrounded by the chain link fence then the chain link fence is yours and the wooden fence might be there correct so. that's what I would think because yeah, we're taking the chain link down and the other property to put the privacy fence up now would you be amenable to if you took the chain link fence down on the sides just doing the whole thing so it, it, it may provide some sort of, of noise barrier just back, backing that privacy fence up with another six foot privacy fence. Take the channel down, put another privacy fence up yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, it just uh, may help with some of the the buffering yeah. of the noise. Yeah. I think it will. I mean, it's bike week. Iron horse or broken spokes literally right there, the biggest stage in Orem Beach. That, and if it's gonna solve that noise, then we can. We want to tell ourselves. I think. Yeah, and knowing, and knowing that area up there, you know, sometimes you, you can't do a whole lot about the music noise, but when you have motorcycles that far back or that yeah. close to the property, you may, you know, yeah, we're sometimes parking. the bikes make more noise than the vans do. Yeah, we're not parking any motorcycles back there whatsoever. That's okay. that's not anything. That, it's all dirt back there. They don't, okay. they don't park back there anyways. It's vendor space 400 foot from that fence as we're putting, that's what we were talking about, putting a couple of vendors. Okay. So and, nothing would happen back on this part of the property? That, well, that's dirt back there which is where we park our trucks and our equipment and stuff when the, when the day's over but it's not i mean motorcycle parking because it's that day like asphalt not dirt i just know sometimes when you go to some of these places and they run out of pavement parking they, they just park on the dirt so. right yeah that's not i mean i guess it could happen but it's not in the plans whatsoever to have motorcycles in the dirt we have plenty we have tons of asphalt on the other other areas if they want to park motorcycles there on the other two businesses i just thought you know it would be an option if it would just if it was a it would appease the residents just to maybe give them some sort of comfort maybe just another extra noise buffer i don't know how much don't know how but how long that is how many feet that is on the back property line it's about 300 feet that's already privacy fence back there so and i think you know i have that weird space between Two privacy fences who's taking care of that, that right I mean, but yeah. you have it now with the chain link and the privacy anyway i mean you have that space in there as well all right just something for thought that's all something i think about commissioner tom anything i have a question for steven now but yeah i'll wait okay. commissioner sarge i'm just not understanding to put up another privacy fence where this is like i'm not understanding the concept here so i'm a little I think because um, yeah. there's a chain link fence, I get that we have a chain link and a, and a privacy fence, but to have, like, like you just said, now you put up another six foot, eight foot fence. When the weeds grow up, who maintains it? I, I get it. I'm just, I'm just, a, I'm just thinking something. If, if something can be done, with the exception of a fence, just for helping buffer the noise. Do you? But I, I'm not. I'm thinking. I don't know how another fence is going to buffer noise. I mean, I, I can see the containment for safety and all, but 
I think you put up bamboo or something to that effect. Is <laughs> more reasonable. Bamboo might work. The problem is, and Stephen, this is a question for you. I mean, even if soundproof fencing usually is concrete. I mean, it's mm -hmm. very expensive. Right. But even if you put a concrete fence here, you've got other venues in close proximity. How do you uh, how do you effectively deal with the noise issue, which is appears to be what Mrs. Wagstaff's main concern is. Right. How, right. You know. And I think that's what the applicant was, was pointing out, that there are other venues along the corridor that are creating those impacts. That his request is, you know, simply 10 spaces and two food trucks and some parking to service those areas. So, you know, I think he's open to put the fence you know, either in this location or the other location. Um, so I, I think it's really a commission decision of, of how you want to process the application. Well, one thing to Mr. Moore, I mean, he's not creating any music noise because he's not having any bands there. It's Correct. just it's just itinerant vendors probably selling food, T-shirts, T-shirts, and then bike parking. Correct. And the band actually parks our Say that into the microphone, please, Kobe, so we can hear you. The like the band for the stage, they park on our property. And all the all the people that work there want to, so they can be close to. The, they want to park on your property to go right, next door. To walk walk okay. next door gotcha. to the music. They drive semis, or what do they drive? Cars, normally just regular okay. trucks and stuff. I was just thinking if they parked their big trucks there along the fence line to help block the noise, maybe that would be a partial solution. They're still. Stephen, let me ask you, they're still subject to our noise ordinance, right? And enforcement by code enforcement. And if it hap if they have two or three violations, then they get canceled and can't continue to. Correct. But again, they're not requesting any there. This site is not producing any music. Right. But just noise in general, engine noise, perpetual. If it's over a certain amount of decibels and she calls and it's Correct. three violations or whatever it, it may is. Be tough to it may be difficult to determine what that noise is going right. to be. Right. I mean, right. there's going to be a lot of street noise right. also and, and just the nature of the area during special events. Right. So. Commission, what's your pleasure? Well, being, I guess, you know, this, since there's no, you're not generating music on that site, then I would. I guess rescind my request for an additional fence. I mean, yeah. I think what's there might be sufficient, but along the sides, I think was, was what you were talking about before, what the planning board had recommended. All right. Yeah, last, yeah. last meeting we were just going to put it in the board. I'm sorry. Per, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Last one we were just planning on just keeping it where it was safe. People couldn't jump a fence. Right. What we were talking right. about. Okay. I'm, pr I'm pretty comfortable with what the planning board had recommended and making sure that uh, the piece of fence is the same as what the other fence is, the wood fence. If you could make it right. can, the same, if, if it's a seven foot, if you could, you know, keep it the same, that's that would be great. And then just be really aware of what you're parking in the back. You know, if you can make that the quiet air, the quieter area, I think that would be that would be smart. Yes, where we park, we'll park all of our vehicles. We have 40 trucks. We'll park. We park across the back, just to keep it where those aren't moving to, to daytime. Now, would you need a variance on that fence to go seven foot? Yeah, we put in for an eight foot, and they they only let us have go a six. six. Yeah, because six is the is in the code. That's all we're allowed to do. I'd love to do an eight, but it could be a condition of the development order. So, if the commission desires to have a seven foot or eight foot fence. It just needs to be part of your motion, and then we can write it into the development order. Is it a seven or eight foot that's there now? Do we know? Uh, it, it looks like seven, seven and a half. So I think if you say <laughs> whatever matches, what's yeah, matching, matching fences. Okay. Sim similar in height to the Simil existing. of similar kind. Thank you. I may give me a second. Uh, Commissioner Miss Wagstaff is waving her hand. Like she wants to talk again. That's not our normal procedure. Does anyone want to listen sure. to her so she feels heard? Ms. Wagstaff, come on up and say whatever you have remaining to say. Yes, if, if that's all it takes is to just adjust it and say, okay, it's going to be a six, instead of a six foot fence, a seven foot se fence would help 
with the sound, and even another fence would help buffer some of it. He's got his own light engineering or factory or business. All that is a lot of sound, it's only Monday through Friday, it's okay. But I don't understand why, I understand why they can't quickly put up a, uh, you know, the soundproof fences, they're, they're a little more expensive, but the wood fence would be all right. But like I said, 1138 and a half is my address and that's right where they're not gonna put it. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm part of the community too. I've been here for 15 years and I take care of my property and I need to, <laughs> I need to have some protection, you know, from all these motorcycles at once. And I, I believe, I, I thought uh, Kobe told me he was gonna park motorcycles. Didn't you tell me you, that you were gonna open up that area to park motorcycles right in the back? Oh, just cars. Over Biketoberfest, you're not gonna put motorcycles in. On the asphalt, that's all on the other side of my fence, these motorcycles. All right, Kobe's but, saying cars only, not motorcycles, for the record, and we can't really have a back and forth conversation like this, so. But he said the asphalt. Said. He said also on the asphalt, motorcycles will be, so I'm gonna hear the sound no matter what. It's only, what, eight or 10 days. Thank you for listening to me again. I appreciate any help that you can be. You know, it's, it's only a few days, but I need to be part of it too, you know? I need to be relaxed and be able to enjoy it. And I, I don't want any problems with it. I'm trying to work it out. I just haven't been able to get to Kobe because he's busy putting up fences. <laughs> Thank you very much for this. Gotcha, thank you. And Stephen, can you show me again with the pointer where Ms. Wagstaff's property is? I'm having trouble placing it on the maps in the packet. Right, so this is um, 1141. This is the, the property here behind that yellow line. That's Ms. Wagstaff. Correct, and then you can see it in the picture right here. So there is a fence. That's the part I was confused about. On her property. On her. On her property, on the applicant's property, the chain link fence. The privacy fence belongs to her. Correct. Okay. It, it appears so. I don't have a survey to say that, but from all indications it looks like the the wood fence is that of the the county residents um, on the other side all right commission if that helps at all thank you Stephen. mr mayor of approval motion for approval from uh we deputy mayor do we need Briley, to did you want to talk about the oh, i'm sorry oh, with like with kind. with the amendment uh that we put uh, that the fence to be erected is of like height of the existing fence. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. And we will close the public hearings. Move to 9A. Ordinance number 2023 54, an ordinance amending the annual budget for fiscal year 2022 2023 by amending the general fund 001. Downtown Redevelopment Trust Fund 104, Stormwater Utility Fund 107, Airport Fund 108, Local Law Enforcement Trust Fund 109, Pension Contribution Pass-Through Fund 113, Recreation Facility Fee Fund 115, Grants Fund 116, 2010 Beachfront Park Bond Fund 220, Capital Improvements Fund 301, Equipment Renewal and Replacement Fund 302, Public Safety Vehicle and Equipment Fund 305, Transportation Improvements Fund 308, Facilities Renewal and Replacement Fund 317, Water and Wastewater Fund 401, Renewal and Replacement Fund 409, Solid Waste Fund 460, and the General Liability Fund 504 and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of Ordinance Number 2023-54, read by title only. Thank you, and I'll ask our Finance Director Kelly McGuire to speak on this item. Thank you, Mayor. So these are items that you have already approved individually throughout the fiscal year. What we need to do at the end of the year, after the year is over, is to go back and to do all the amendments. The majority of these are capital projects. They were originally budgeted in fiscal year 22, and then we approved them and did the projects in fiscal year 23. Also, you had your solid waste contract amendment, and then the debris removal for Hurricane Ian. There are also transfers that need to happen amongst the funds. And then we had some other budget additions. Mostly those were 
emergency purchases or the advancement that you made on dollars so that we could do a pre-order of the police vehicles. Right. So that's the $15 million worth of budget amendments. I will tell you, um, if you don't recall from prior years, this is pretty typical, right? The about $8 million of capital projects. So we typically will reduce the but one year's budget and then move the dollars to the next year. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Kelly. I don't have any cards. Any questions for Kelly? Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. Reports, suggestions, and requests. And tonight we start with City Manager Joyce Shanahan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a reminder that we have a special meeting on October 25th regarding the Hunters Ridge DRI. On November 7th is your regular city commission meeting, but that will be at Calvary Christian Church primarily for the Tomoka Oaks Reserve. December 5th is a regular commission meeting, and December 19th, that's been an added commission meeting, and that's for um, the comp plan amendments that we talked about previously. Uh, I wanted the commission to know that, um, as we've done in the past, uh, the A1A Scenic Corridor um, Historic Coastal Byway has a super, super um, yard sale. It's 150 miles uh, long, and the city has waived that in the past. It was too late to bring that to the commission, so I made that um, waiver. And what's the total fee for that, Stephen? It's actually coming on the um, November 7th commission oh, meeting. Okay, very so, so yeah, um, five dollars is a typical yeah. cross on the field. Exactly. But we're good. there's enough time to bring it back to the commission. Okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. No worries. Yep. Okay. Well, you're duly noted, duly warned about that. Um, I just wanted to announce that OBPD uh, held a vehicle display for Community Helper Day at Salty Kids Preschool and the Montessori Global Research Institute. Of course, it was a big success, much like our. Um, Leisure services, uh, much like the National Night Out. Uh, fall bird walks begin at the EDC on Wednesdays beginning October 25th and join Joan Tague. And thank you, Mr. Mayor, for recognizing her at the State of the City. And those begin at 8 a.m. and you can meet at the Environmental Discovery Center. Um, the Hometown Heroes program, you started that several years ago, which was a huge success, and Halifax um, Health has helped sponsor that for many years. Um, that's a banner program that we put on the bridge, and those will be up on November 1st. Uh, this program honors 96 veterans each year during the month of November, and the tribute banners will be displayed on the street lamps across the bridge. Um, we're having a Veterans Day luncheon this year on Thursday, November 9th for the Veterans Day celebration. It'll be located at the Senior Center. Uh, the event will consist of a short program, music, and lunch, and Leisure Services staff will be there, and you're all invited to attend that. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have, um, and that's all I have. Any questions for Joyce? Thank, Thank you. you. Assistant City Manager Claire Whitley. Uh, no comments, good night. Thank you, Claire. City Attorney Randy Hayes. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. And tonight we start with Deputy Mayor Briley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be uh, very brief. Uh, it was a pleasure to attend the State of the City addressed last week uh, at Oceanside Country Club uh, where I think this year's uh, theme was moving innovation and I think your comments Mr. Mayor that the, st the state of the city is, is strong and we're doing prosperous and well uh, was very well received I think that's that's very true um, a lot of good things happening in Orem Beach I think our video showed our, our residents uh, what, what we're doing in Orem Beach and how how well things are going so Thank you all for those that you, of, of you that were there, and thank you, city staff, for helping put that on. Um, next, I attended the Orman Main Street uh, installation yesterday over at the Orman Memorial Art Museum, and just want to congratulate them on their new officers and directors and the great work they continue to do for our downtown and our city. With that, Mr. Mayor, I'll say goodnight. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Commissioner Tolland. Thank, thank you. Um, the uh, uh, Nancy Galdo with the scenic loop. Oh, don't make fun of my notes. <laughs> he was cheating. He was looking at my notes. I'm just saying. Anyway, Nancy Galdo with the scenic loop and byway uh, had the opportunity to speak to the quality of life 
um, last week or the week before, I can't remember. She made a very excellent presentation um, to the Quality of Life Board. And re she received a unanimous vote of support um, for that entranceway um, to the park um, regarding the scenic loop. And so, um, and that, if you remember, that's the property that's opposite where the Union Church um, was on the east side. Um, Dr. Shapiro um, and the members were very complimentary on the idea, and they seemed very excited about the educational signage and plantings that the, the group wants to do. And they are looking forward to working with the city um, in any way that, that we can move this forward. Um, I had the opportunity to host a town hall at Ormond Lakes. Um, I was prepared with many topics I was hoping to be able to um, talk about. I did showcase our um, video of the state of the city there, and I thought that was well received. But of course, the main topic was Belvedere. And um, I, was, I, I was able to share with them how we are being um, trying to use our social media in giving more updated information and complimented our public information officer there and um, show them how they can find out where our agenda is and where the minutes are of the meetings to just you know keep keep that transparency going um, i do apologize for missing the um, council on aging event that that um, talked about the Crotty family and honoring them. I've worked with uh, multiple of the family members over the years at, in different organizations, and they're very, they, I just want to compliment the whole Crotty family um, publicly on their dedication to serving others in the community. Um, the Regrow the Loop had their fall tree giveaway at the Environmental Discovery Center, another opportunity for us to showcase our beautiful city. Um, and for all of those that signed the pledge and also attended an educational seminar, we're able to receive a free tree, native tree. Um, and that was a very successful event. And um, the only other thing I was wanting to share is I had the opportunity to host some out of town friends last week. And so I was the tour guide, all right? And I've lived here since 89 and you really take advantage, I mean, of living here, you don't you don't see the town the way others see it. So, I brought them over to City Hall. I let them see this area. We toured the casements. We walked under the bridges. We saw Bailey River Bridge Park, Vadner Park, the museum, Vadner, um, and the the Arts Museum, and they were just totally amazed at our town and what we have and I know uh, I just was just thrilled with their responses and we actually went to is Tomoka State Park and we took a um, cruise with Captain Corn, a two-hour cruise and um, just talked about all the whole estuary and the plants and the, the birds so I'm just going to challenge you all to look at Ormond Beach now in the eyes of a tourist or a visitor and really see the beauty that we have here. And I did have to go to Holly Hill and play some pickleball, and we do have a missed opportunity there. That was amazing. Anyway, good night. Thank you, Commissioner. Good night. And uh, Commissioner Sargent. That wasn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I'd like to just thank, again, staff and the police union for getting that contract finally. It feels like it dragged on forever. Um, a lot of work on both sides, but I think it was um, at the end of the day, everyone was very pleased with it. Um, we didn't lose. I know we were, there was talks of losing some officers along the way. I don't believe we lost any. Um, and I think this is going to be a good, um, it'll help with the recruiting for, to fill the last couple of spots that I believe we have vacant, which are two or ish. Um, so just, and, and thank you for what our, our police officers do for us. Um, the State of the City was a great event, and I know that's a big fundraiser for the Chamber. Um, I would like to propose maybe looking at in the next year or so, um, maybe if we could do a State of the City for the residents in, in this area, 
and um, maybe each commissioner could um, recognize a resident in their zone to give an award to mayor could give an award to you know citywide and just have the focus be on the residents um, so they could have an opportunity to see it um, maybe in this area um, I know that Peggy Farmer started the, the state of the city 19 years ago I believe it was um, I think so. so with the chamber um, just something I'd like to throw out there um, uh, let's see what else I have here would you like my notes no I have enough uh, on the Belvedere issue I know the county made those couple motions today and I just um, I kind of at first I jumped on board and said wow maybe we need to you know follow suit and then I th the more you think about it it's city of Warman has done everything that we can I mean we we stepped up and we did everything possible I just don't think there's more for us to do um, uh, on this issue at this point but to stay on top of it I think um, as the residents have have spoken and they're pleased with with the work that we've done and I uh, I'm thankful for that um, uh, let me see my notes here uh, okay um, when I decided to run for office a couple things that I wanted to run on was to bring more transparency back through upgrading our website social media audio in the chambers um, and supporting our police all of which thankfully we have done um, all the media and everything and the audio or it's all out for RFPs within the first year um, and um, this is not about me it's about the residents of zone 2 and uh, I will be seeking re-election. Um, I'll be filing the paperwork this week. And with that, good night. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I mentioned earlier about our relationship with DOT. I just wanted to share, kind of under correspondence with the commission, a uh, note that I received from John Tyler, who's the uh, our district secretary, District 5. and. Uh, He's over in Deland. Mayor and Commission, thank you so much for being part of our Moving Florida Forward announcement. I really appreciate our partnership with the city and look forward to getting to construction. Thanks, John Tyler. So that was nice of him to take the time to handwrite, handwrite that note and wanted to share that with you. Congratulations uh, to Ormond Main Street. What I love about Ormond Main Street is that uh, it's an organization that combines businesses and our residents together and they are uh, you don't have to own a business to belong to Ormond Main Street you can just love Ormond Beach and care about the community Commissioner Tolland is our I believe our rep now to that board and uh, it's a great group of folks I was traveling yesterday uh, but thank you for everyone who attended that and uh, we can't obviously we can't all make everything but there's enough of us that would somebody can usually be at everything which is great so thank you for for attending that and from all all accounts it was a great great event um <clears throat> a couple things i heard during audience comments uh trees being cut at the airport for a runway extension um my understanding and i've asked this probably for the last six months, maybe the last year, there are no plans for any runway extension. Uh, there's nothing in the works. There's nothing in front of any board. There's no secret staff discussions. There's just nothing going on with any kind of runway extension. So if we can kill that rumor right here, right now, tonight, I think that would be a, a good thing. I almost wish we had a web page uh, to kill the rumors that don't exist. Um, because that's one that I hear from time to time and it's just absurd trees being cut uh, there was an item on the last agenda we denied uh, awarding that contract and I think staff is looking at other ways to get that done that's something that has to be done my understanding is every year anyway the FAA requires that it's just kind of like a every year kind of thing so trees are going to get cut out there because the federal government says if you're going to have an airport, you got to uh, remove obstacles, and there has to be a, 
a plan, a clear zone, and a lot of rules and regulations surrounding how that happens, probably geared towards protecting the environment and as many trees as possible. So uh, those two things don't have anything to do with each other. Uh, there will be some trees cut if they're causing an obstruction after a huge amount of red tape and federal bureaucracy, which we comply with so that we don't get into trouble as a city. And then the runway, there are no plans for extension on that. <clears throat> and then there, the other rumor that I heard uh, rear its ugly head is something about 100 planes coming from Embry-Riddle. And I think there was a postcard, false, complete lie postcard sent to Bear Creek residents a few months ago that said something about airplanes coming to Bear Creek. None of us had heard about it. None of staff had heard about it. There's nothing in front of the city having to do with anything that would involve more Embry-Riddle airplanes at the Ormond Beach Airport. Um, so I don't know where this stuff comes from, but uh, it's just good for us as a city to be able to kill those rumors so people aren't running around like chickens with their heads cut off thinking that that the sky is falling when none of these things are happening and i worry the reason i bring it up is because when people say it there uh people who hear it think that it's true and it's not truth so just to make sure we're all on the same page with that uh state of the city was a great event uh such a wonderful opportunity to honor some amazing people we have a ton of amazing people I think I said that day we're an amazing city because we have such amazing people who who care about Ormond Beach and uh, if you haven't seen the video please get it it's available online we can send it to you the link to it it's on YouTube I think if you google that uh, Facebook all the all the normal channels and uh, so hopefully you get a chance to look at that and enjoy that and with that, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Good night.